the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I told us that this year, God wants us to succeed. Say after me, God wants me to succeed. Say it, God wants me to succeed. My status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Oh yes, God is changing everyone's story. Status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. No matter where your family has been, prophesy it. Status is changing. No more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way. On my way. To better days. To better days. Hey. I'm on my way. On my way. right the master key to attracting uncommon favor please make reference to my teaching activating seasons of greatness there i teach that the key to greatness in life is favor and i teach that there are two dimensions of favor there is favor with god and favor with men the bible says and the boy jesus grew in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and men I told you that it is possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. So, I told us that the key to having favor with God, there are three things that I taught us. I'm just recapping on the teaching. Three things. Number one, I told us is called the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence. Reverence. Priority. Respect for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, I told us our tithing. 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 I can't remember what I said the third one was. But then, I remember teaching us that when it comes to favor with men, there is a requirement and the Lord asked me to recap it. I'm telling you, God has an agenda with us this year. Praise the Lord. God wants to break barriers and not only cause us to be healing people and bless people, but God wants to make people and families prosper. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a very serious issue in many families. And I told you this is better. Praise the Lord. Diligence. Everybody say diligence. We're going to talk a bit, just a few minutes on diligence. What is diligence? Diligence is the virtue of hard work. The virtue of thoroughness. Diligence and mastery, really. Diligence and mastery. The ultimate key to attracting uncommon favor in this realm and in this system, please pay attention, is diligence and mastery. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, one of the things that God has helped us to understand is the balance and understanding on how the kingdom works, the components of the kingdom. Now, we have a lot of people who leave everything all to God. They say Jesus has died. He's paid all the price. 
it should come to me freely. You will, you will be broke and you will fail in life if that is the circumference of your belief about God. On the other hand, we have people who are just hustlers. They want to make it by any means and they throw away the God factor. Both are wrong. Are you getting me? Diligence and mastery. Two keys. I've been challenging us last, um, I think it was last week, I did challenge us in this light again. Um, what is mastery? Mastery means comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or area. Comprehensive knowledge, skill, proficiency, competence. Genesis 41, please quickly. Genesis 41 from verse 36 to 46, just 10 verses. And let's look at one case study in the Bible. Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse 36. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. Verse 36 says, And that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not in famine. Verse 37 the Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you're there? One, to read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this in whom the spirit of God is? He said, can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, this interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy. And Pharaoh said, who is the person? In other words, he threw a challenge to the entire Egypt. Can we find such a man if you know you are that qualified, if you know you are that proficient, step up. No race was mentioned. He didn't say if you are an Egyptian or if you are a Jew. He said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? such a skilled person such a proficient person and the bible says there was none and then verse 39 and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has shown thee this thing there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art he was not just lifted because he was a he was a of of the covenant and, and all of that no the Bible says the king testified. Pharaoh, he said there is none. There is none who is as discreet and wise. And because of that, verse 40, thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting. No discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of authority, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. 44. 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And he cried before him, Bow the knee, 
and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Look at that. 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph, you know, called him all the name, and he gave unto him his wife, Asenath, and the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went all over the land of Egypt, the last verse. And Joseph was how many years old? How many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of Egypt. Everybody say diligence. Say proficiency. Listen to me. The world that we lead in right now, if you want the favor, favor, that's the reward system of the kingdom. The favor of God. Many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access. I told you that you need to get my teachings, the full gospel. There I give you a balanced view of the dimension of God's grace and favor. Because I told you every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible Christianity. Read from Genesis to Revelation. Every time God wanted to bless a man, he demanded partnership on his own part. Is that true? It's not all up to God. And it's not all up to you. Your own part is to be diligent. To gain mastery. Hallelujah. I began to teach last week and I said that there are so many people in the body of Christ. They are poor. They are average. They are poor at their place of work. They are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do different ministers of the gospel they want crowd they want grace they want fame they want popularity but there is no diligence no diligence no mastery right a man of god comes to stand on stage and says don't worry don't mind what i'm saying just believe that the power of god will touch you let me tell you something when you see a congregation gather like this they are a mixed multitude not everybody is a daft are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now? God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph. So many people in Egypt. The question I always ask is. Didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record. But at least as a Pharaoh. He should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son. And to make Joseph. a It wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exalt Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. You submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one act. According to their several ability. 
he had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life, especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500,000. Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I'm the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me, influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies, to buy into your perspectives about life. When you are a man of influence, you sustain an ability that causes men to love your God, to love your principles. That's influence. The kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts. Right? And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. People who are broke, suffering, failures in life, but are just crying and say, Lord, we love you. Sooner or later, it will affect you. When there is no food in your house, you will not be able to fast. You see, the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money. Uncle or auntie. Remember we spoke last, last, um, last week, right? Dependency mentality. Take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent. A lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you. What you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing. You, don't, you, are not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? Their comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy called to prepare God's people. 
there are many business people i want to be a businessman you write it in your room ceo no mastery no diligence they talk they cannot articulate their value let me tell you something if we do not challenge ourselves we will keep dancing around in church but babylon will feed us and i told you whoever feeds you is the one you bow to no matter what you claim to do in church joseph same story with daniel he reigned through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty six to twenty eight. you will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight i tell you verse 26 are we there it says and jeroboam the son of nebat the ephraimite of zereda solomon's servant whose mother whose mother's name was zeroa a widow woman even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo's and repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty men of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous, made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jesus. Seeing that he was industrious. He said, no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, every area the Lord wants to use me 
I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God opened doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you, both in the church and in the secular environment, the minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down, they say, Kai, Ken, ah, that song. And you say, really? You, you see how you are deceiving yourself? We, our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast. Because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah Katayama. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community you are the best. See the nations. 
if you don't make room for the nations you will never be beyond the nations that's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members more than 100 members more than 500 members more than a thousand members because the capacity they have not made room for the blessing is God speaking to us please don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked this guy just got a job in two months he's promoted him proficiency proficiency closely tied to that I spoke about laziness oh by the way Proverbs 22 verse 29 says see thou a man diligent in his business it gives you an assurance it says you will not stand before mean men average people once you are diligent it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs. Proverbs what? 10 verse 4. Who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus. Proverbs. Proverbs. After Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4. It says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia, he becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Twelve verse eleven. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. It said not slothful. The word slothful there means laggy. You are not. You are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? It said not slothful in business, diligent. Fervent, zealous in spirit, serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord, you want to serve his body, you must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something, as you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether they write apostle, Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. 
competence. When you become competent, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, all of a sudden, where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow. Meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much. But competence. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average there and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years. 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. What he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches. And they will find him and not even ask, what is it? Nobody will ask whatever and say, come, we are willing to pay you. Huh? And you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say, Lord, this church, I already see my destiny. No matter what you saw in your dream, I guarantee you, if you are not diligent, you won't enter into it. Praise the Lord. You are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to, there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We, we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around, you came late and said, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake in Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon, 
defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room so that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. No more I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. 
I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver word in season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side is leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We are going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts. When you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian, but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job. That they were paying him 5,000. I told him no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then, together, 
his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20 downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David sins. But he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle. The architect of that construction. He was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your, play your own part. And tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, ah, ah is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that, you must make up your mind, brothers and sisters, that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and i send you like the foxes of samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar i've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. 
Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Shekele Barababa. Never will I be termed forgotten, but I will be called Pula. Pula, the land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business, mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray as a worker. I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out. In my generation, I must stand out. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I'd like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says for our light afflictions, which is what for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. 
Era na Maria na na bo. Era na na Maria na 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 bo. Praise the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Insist that you must be touched this night. Insist that something must change. It doesn't take time. It just takes one encounter. You came with a lot of challenges. Don't sit down and waste your time. Make sure you cry unto God. Tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight. Go ahead. Please speak to the Lord, especially for those standing outside. Make sure you talk to him. I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain let it rain Would you open The floodgates of heaven Let it rain Let it rain Open the floodgates of heaven hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people 
But I want you to know tonight that the God of wonders is still in this place. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Your hands, everyone. Hallelujah. Listen. Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members, all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three. Shake it, those devils. I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. Shake it, The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God. I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place For the power of God is everywhere There is no hiding place Not for witchcraft There is no hiding place I command judgment Let the angels Of the living God Move across this congregation And break chains Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break. Chains. Chains break. Listen, some of you, this chains has lasted for years and decades. I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family, you will know it when it happens. 
because I hear sounds of chains at the count of three shout that name again with all your might and I command that as they shout may those chains break one two three chains of stagnation chains Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families, Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what says thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have I don't care what covenants you have in the name of Jesus therefore I speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of Jesus one, two, three go, 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 go out you go out you go out you go never to return 
out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood I cost you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now I compel you by the blood of Jesus the gates of captivity that blood opens that Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed. We open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely here. Stephanie, Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like, is it four children or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours. If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let's know if there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. That there is a call of God upon the family not just your mother but upon the family and it's a prophetic call it's a prophetic call right it's not only your mother I didn't I'm, I'm, I don't know you people but the hand of God is going to come upon you it's a mighty anointing of the spirit it will come upon you are you part of the family huh you are related. You are what? You are your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come. Come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. 
the same word that comes. Listen, listen, my dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother, this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does, what, what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now. Because they have been talking about this woman. She sees and people have been saying she's fake. I'm saying if this woman is fake, she will not enter this place. I guarantee you, except I'm not a man of God. Please, she's not fake. What she needs is, is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened. She has a lot of prophetic insight, but the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken Hold hands, both of you. I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jem Bramato Zatali Kaparando Skolabaya. Mambro no Supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing. That is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing drink of that wine right now in the name of jesus christ don't be afraid to help her you won't be with her forever but the lord is going to lift you in due season and you will begin to see in a strange way may the lord bless you may he anoint you in the name of jesus christ i break the embargo of darkness over the family come you're a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies in Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is there's Newi. I know it's an evil place, right? There is there is a there is somebody at, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. I don't know. You don't know. Yeah. You I love God. Sleep. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, dear. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not... Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Less than... Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me, just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. 
Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus? I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My Come on, give it. Praise the Lord. To break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch them. your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request, not for money. Many of you ask for money. I will give me money, sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Yes, and I have since graduate. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've the, left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cafter of your legs? Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs in the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The 
cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy. Look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this hole. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made Let me yours. Please bring out. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen. All of you standing. I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you the price has been paid. And so as we pray, 
everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing so you must focus don't be distracted don't be distracted hallelujah Elijah said if you can see me don't don't be distracted please hallelujah please pass your request ushers let's hurry up please get them to the aisle just pass it to the last person the last person by the side please help the ushers inside and outside it's not a ritual there is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place please begin to pray in tongues as you do that please everywhere begin to pray in tongues all those connecting with us online it's time for them to connect now so that we can Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God hallelujah please very quickly inside and outside if others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out just you can just keep it and connect by faith unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come Lord Jesus we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ these are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long. Let's do it very quickly. I have seen... God do strange things strange things in the lives of people we have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles please I want you to know the person you are praying to I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman it's not to an idol you are not praying to the president of this nation the king of kings is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am. I am. Hallelujah. Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels. There are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Hey. Father, hear the prayers of your people in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles, supernatural jobs. 
supernatural lifting in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answered prayer will all flesh come. Every cry, every need, Lord, every pain. Lord, let things that look impossible by men. We pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs. Amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord. The needs of your people in the name of Jesus we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus my father as we lay these prayer points before you Lord we ask in the name of Jesus we ask that doors be opened let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God he said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents no matter where you are one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation please I want you to believe everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed there is no room for entertainment we fear God and will not gather you to waste your time hallelujah the Bible says believe in the Lord and you shall be established he said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level, by the weapon of the prophetic, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. Makoto Tekete. Skeparata Telekotopai. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down, may they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down, may they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down in the name of jesus the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage i cause fear from your life now i cause fear from your life now i cause fear i cause fear, I cause fear. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision. Mysterious prophetic encounters. May your exact assignment be revealed. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people praying right now. All you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level. You just came to get direction. I prophesy to you. The Bible says, and ye shall hear a voice from behind. Saying, this is the way. I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus, I connect you. I connect you. Business helpers, ministry helpers, academic helpers, marital helpers, receive the ministry. In the name of Jesus. Prophecy is like rain. Your job is to receive it. Once you receive it, it starts acting immediately in your life. hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood 
I break you free from any covenant of infirmity. I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever. Hallelujah. I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families. There are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them. In the name of Jesus, we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service. Return with breakthrough testimonies. Return with breakthrough testimonies. You may not know how it will happen, but may my God go before you and shock you. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. There are many who are giving. You are tithing. You are faithful. But it just looks like when things are about to happen, there are limitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that beginning from next month, I invoke the mystery of divine supply. The same way, hear me. The same way a raven, the Bible does not tell us where it came from, but it brought bread for the prophet. I command mysteriously, may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles. I pray for everyone called dull in this place. You understand but something happens to your mind. That 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the Bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures I pray for you May understanding be granted unto you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Favor, Magaba Dadala, the one factor that separates men, that favor in a heavy dimension, may it mantle you from now. May favor mantle you from now. In the name of Jesus, financial favor, marital favor, academic favor, favor in your job, favor in ministry. Hallelujah. Everyone who is confused about life, any aspect of life, I bring that confusion to an end now. I pray for all those who came here specifically trusting God for the fruit of the womb in fact I pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore I command be fruitful in the name of Jesus be fruitful multiply subdue and have dominion in the name of Jesus I command everything called dead in your life and your family I don't care for how long it has died your health, your business, your life in the name of the Lord Jesus I command resurrection right now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you. There are people who desire God. You desire an encounter. That's what you need. You desire an encounter. I pray for you. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you. 
you may not understand what I'm saying. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your gift, your ability, your skill, whatever you are using that brings bread. Help her, please. I pray for you, the works of your hands, because you are determined to be diligent. You will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer. I put an anointing on your skill. I put an anointing. I put an anointing on your ability. I put an anointing on your gift, on your work, on your skill. May it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I just want to do an impartation. There are people who have come from different places. Please be sensitive. We are out of time. We will soon round up. But it's time to receive something. Listen. Listen, I told you there will be many impartations. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No matter what you are doing, when the grace is not there, you will struggle forever. Please hear me. Especially in ministry. If you are a minister of the gospel in this place, help that please. It's time for you to catch this thing for real. It's yours for the taking. Listen, I want to pray. As I stretch my hands and pray, inside and outside, wherever you are, you must not be in ministry like fivefold. Whatever area, many of you will begin to have dreams, encounters. Listen, many of you will step into healing graces. There's no time to move one by one. But I'm going, it's one of the major assignments God gave me tonight. Please believe it. You will argue it at your own detriment. There is a cheap route. The help of God is here to lift you. The help of God is here to take you. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, I pray that in the next two minutes, let there be from the front to the back, outside, let there be strange impartations at the count of three. One, two, three. Let the wind blow right now. Receive it. Prophetic graces. Apostolic graces. Eprotosia. Dreams. Visions. Encounters. Dreams. Visions. Encounters. The word of knowledge. Gifts of the spirit. Let there be distributions. Right now. Right now. Right now. The gift of wisdom. The word of knowledge. The working of miracles. The gift of tongues. and interpretation of tongues. The gift of prophecy. Gifts of healing. Healing mantles. Receive it. Receive it. Leadership anointings. Leadership anointings. Leadership anointings. I impart it. Leadership anointings. Utterance, utterance, utterance. I release it to you. Utterance in the name of Jesus to communicate the things of the Spirit. Utterance, receive it. Utterance, I, I release upon you insight into scriptures, insight into the mysteries of the kingdom. I grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit, the mysteries of dominion, the mysteries of prosperity, the mysteries of impact. Hallelujah. The final prayer I want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed 
but not honorable. It says, and Jabez was more honorable. Honor, that fragrance that compels loyalty, that fragrance, Zamatic alive. Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice, inside and outside, may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus i release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and i declare these hands that are lifted like aaron like joshua lifted up the hands of his servant moses i command may those hands never go down may the lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and i pray for marriages supernaturally may god connect people supernaturally in the name of jesus christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are i prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members sing hallelujah sing just help those under the anointing please Sing hallelujah to the Lord. I'm just seeing the smoke of his presence across this place. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing Christ is risen. Sing Christ is risen. Sing Christ is risen from the dead. Spirit of the living God, we pray that whilst the word comes, move in our midst and let it truly be that this was a night of encounter in the name of Jesus Joel chapter 2 from verse 25 Joel chapter 2 from verse 25 and I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten the canker worm the caterpillar the palmer worm my great army which i sent among you and ye shall eat in plenty and shall be satisfied and shall praise the name of the lord your god that had dealt wondrously with you the last statement says and my people shall never shall never let me use this opportunity to speak that everything that followed you here representing shame and representing reproach i stand upon this altar in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god may shame and reproach be rolled away forever may shame and reproach be rolled away forever The Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. That was his end. But at the beginning, the Bible says, because the mother bore him in sorrow, she named him Jabez. But a time came, he was angry. He said, it's time for me to go forward. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. Again, oh, let me speak over someone. It may be that there are limitations that have followed you for years in the name of jesus christ who is also the lifter of men i prophesy to you everything tying you down so
so that the only thing moving is your age nothing else is moving in your life i command let it be broken now 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 now. He called Lazarus out from the grave. He gave an instruction. He said, lose him and let him go. Let me speak to someone here. Whatever has tied you in the name that is above all names, by the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, I declare, be loose now. Be loose now. Be loose now. Be loose now. now. Please sit down. The Bible, the Bible lets us know that in our walk with God, please pay attention. There are systems of advantage. That can be introduced into the life of a believer that gives him an edge over life and over circumstances are we together now in the dealings of God with men and captured all through scripture from Genesis to Revelation we see that there were men who were under all kinds of circumstances but that somewhere along their lives a system of advantage was introduced into their lives and it began to change the narrative of their lives here's what the bible says for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the lord and those who are the called according to his purposes why is it that all things can work for good because regardless the situation and the circumstance in god's economy he sustains the ability as the el shaddai to introduce what i call systems of advantage there is nobody's life that is in advantage by default are we together now yes the first of that system of advantage being salvation that when you come to the saving knowledge of jesus christ according to the authority of scripture the bible says that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son then the bible lets us know that you become a partaker of god's life that is the first system of advantage that comes into your life john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy the bible says it says but i am come that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly are we still together but then there are other systems of advantage that are spiritual arsenals that god had made and put in place for believers so that no matter and regardless what happens in your life by the introduction of these systems of advantage you eventually emerge victorious it is it is on the strength of these systems of advantage that we show the all-surpassing dominion power of the christ so that regardless my background regardless what it is that happened or did not happen in my life once i come to christ there is no such thing as too late because there are sufficient spiritual arsenals that can be introduced into the life of a believer to begin to correct even age-long anomalies are we together now an example of these systems of advantage is the mercy of god one of these systems of advantage is the favor of god one of these systems of advantage is speed and acceleration all these are provisions that were captured in the economy of god to the intent that when and if any man decides to walk with the lord 
man begins to grow through knowledge you can access these truths and then the reality of the divine life starts speaking because you engage these things there are people for instance who come from backgrounds where they are saddled with all kinds of yokes and curses and by default these individuals become victims of life victims of situations and circumstances and even if they get born again there are still constraints that their lives constraints in their lives by reason of the advantage the devil had there has to be a way of correcting that anomaly are we together now there are people who by reason of activities of witchcraft did not have the privilege say to go to school early and to move forward early so already by default they are already retrogressed and delayed in life is there a way that god can help those people to catch up in destiny oh yes there is the name given to that mystery is called speed that god can take the 10 years that were wasted and transfer it into a man's future and make it happen in one day are we together now listen when we say we are victorious we are not just saying it because jesus died and resurrected just religiously we are saying it because we are aware of the spiritual arsenals that the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus has provided for the believer today it is on the strength of these truths that we make our boast in the lord are we together now yes so we know that we are victorious we know that in spite of what happened or did not happen a woman may be barren for five years ten years even twenty years if that woman gives birth to a child yet yeah, thank god for the child but time has gone if she is to give birth to four children one by one by one by one at what age will she be done giving birth so when god gives her quadruplets he did not just give a child he carried years and brought it in nine months are, are you seeing that now i'm saying this because tonight there is something that is about to happen to someone here in the name of jesus the son of the living god that the things that have 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 been um a, a disadvantage to your life we have come to introduce a system of advantage into your work that will begin to so change things that those who knew you will say is Saul when has Saul also become one of the prophets please sit down hallelujah are we together once upon a time Moses went to meet his half brother Ramesses who had now become the pharaoh of egypt to advocate the exodus of god's people and they came out of egypt and he began to pursue them they stood before the red sea there was no provision to move forward again egyptians behind the sea in front by what architectural mechanism were they going to build a system of safety to cross over everybody says systems of advantage and in exodus chapter 14 when you read from verse 13 and 14 and 15 moses had a strange encounter with god he said fear not moses is speaking now a visionary leader he said stand still and see the salvation of the lord which he show you today for these egyptians whom ye have seen today you shall see them no more forever listen as at the time he was saying this he did not even know the dynamics of how it will happen all he knew was that the lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace then verse 15 the lord said to moses wherefore criest thou to me he says speak unto the children of israel that they go forward hold on how do i go forward when i know that a sea can swallow anything i hope you know that it was not just that the sea parted the gap the land had to rise to their level to be able to walk because even if the sea parted it would still be a depth that they would not cross 
Listen carefully. Just help those under the anointing now. And then Moses received that instruction. And when he stretched forth his rod, the Egyptians saw a dimension of God they had not seen among any of the gods of Egypt. The God who with the breath of his nostrils, he parted the sea like doors, hither and thither, and lifted land to their level on dry ground. When they crossed over, Pharaoh attempting to cross over was swallowed by the sea. Miriam was too grateful. She sang a song. She said, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. Even the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. One time, they became hungry. Very hungry. And God said, I want to show you the systems that are available in this kingdom. Manna, not seeds for you to sow. There are times God can give you seed and wisdom to sow. But there are times the urgency requires bread. You don't have the time to start sowing and waiting for harvest. God can send both seed and he can give bread. He can give seed to the sower. But he also can give bread to the eater. It is true that God can give you a job and you can start saving for 5-10 years. But there are times that God can give you the keys to a house in one day. It is the same God doing it. Please pay attention. Then they stand in front of Jericho. A fence so fortified, the Bible says five chariots could stand on it. Imagine a fence that five chariots could stand on it. Even if it collapses, it's still a fence again. And Joshua was led to introduce another system of advantage. The Bible says Jericho was shot. Nothing could come out of it. Nothing could enter it. And they went round singing praises every day once. And on the seventh day they went round. And he said when you hear the sound of that trumpet. That you lift up a shout. And the Bible tells us that the walls of Jericho. It did not just fall it sank. The power of God. And one of these systems of advantage tonight. That the Lord wants to introduce. Is called the mystery of of restoration ah, the mystery of restoration please look up scattered through scripture the bible tells us that men can gain things but also men can lose things is that true we see that people lost things even believers lost things in scripture for instance Saul the son of Kish they lost their donkey the father's donkey and they went looking for it jesus himself in giving his parable helping them understand the system of the kingdom spoke about the parable of the lost coin so we know that it is not unusual for things to be missing it is not unusual for us to lose things but then the bible gives us another interesting angle to it that man can lose things but men can lose time the loss of time according to scripture is truly what we call loss if you lose things you can get it back but when you lose time because destiny is measured in time write it down the unit of destiny is time that means whatever you give your time to you give part of your life to Whatever takes your time has taken a part of your destiny. Are we together now? The unit of destiny is time. And so there are times you can lose things. Sadly, after the pandemic or during the pandemic, many people lost money, many people lost jobs, many people lost businesses. So we know that men can lose things. But it is more deadly when you lose time. When you meet a dying man 
and ask him what is your greatest desire he will not say more houses he will not say more land the greatest request of a dying man is more time isaiah 38 the bible lets us know that hezekiah was sick unto death and isaiah came to him and said put your house in order god has brought a word you will not recover from this sickness the bible says isaiah turned his face to the wall and his prayer was a request of time time from the human standpoint is irredeemable when it passes it doesn't go back it only goes forward and that means whatever can eat up your time has taken a part of your destiny so when the bible says i will restore the years you need to understand the gravity of that miracle restore years how do you restore years when a man gets born again at 40 respectfully speaking and at 50 yes he's done well to get born again but in truth as far as destiny and impact and fulfillment of life is concerned time is gone you will need to introduce this system of advantage in your life is that true yeah. restoration is a very powerful mystery to restore means to take a person or to take a thing to its original position where it would have been if there were no constraint listen carefully there is a difference between restoration and progress let me have two people can i have two gentlemen two well-dressed gentlemen please come let me use you for an example just two and that's fine we have this one more person watch this now i like to teach illustratively so that you will understand now this is what i want you to do walk together all right walk slowly now these guys are at the same pace in life and destiny are, are we together now they are going to walk towards me but along as they walk i'm going to make one of them to be delayed and then eventually i'll ask him to start coming i want to show you the difference between progress and restoration are we together now walk gently gentlemen so born on the same day and now for whatever reason stop moving can you see this is where he would have been so he's behind now now keep moving this is progress not restoration because he will never still catch up now let me show you what restoration is when god picks him and brings him here do you understand that now so that when you look at his life you cannot find the gap that delay created again i prophesy to you again in the name of jesus christ everything that has represented delay in your life here at this conference may my god push you forward in the name of jesus christ thank you please sit down please sit down so it is true that we can lose things the concept of losses is a concept that we do not want to hear anything about not in business not nobody wants to lose losing is dangerous no one wants to lose a loved one no one wants to lose money no one wants to lose honor no one wants to lose respect no one wants to lose your valuable why do we protect our cars why do we protect our homes because we hate losses let's discuss the subject of losses for a while is god helping someone there are five reasons why people lose in life remember we're teaching on advancement but we have to deal with the subject of delay and retrogression there are five reasons from scripture why men lose number one very quickly the first reason why people lose in life is because of lack of discernment write it down please the lack of discernment lack of discernment can cause you to lose hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 we we'll walk through a few scriptures hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible says therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep remember jesus was giving us the parable 
of the sower is that true and he said the seed is the word of god the soil being the hearts of men and he said for all the soils seeds were sown but satan came immediately and he caused losses and for those that satan came they were the ones who did not pay attention to produce understanding from their hearing genesis chapter 28 and verse 16 very interesting rendition this just a background for that scripture very quickly this was jacob remember the bible tells us that jacob came to a place called loss and he laid a stone for to sleep in the night are we bible students and then the bible says while he slept he saw a ladder he had a dream and he saw a ladder that connected the earth and the heavens angels were ascending and descending but do you know none of them were coming to him they were moving close to him taking messages to those who were calling them and he was there and never partook of that angelic activity and when he woke up verse 16 please he made a very instructive statement he said surely the lord is in this place and i knew not i did not discern that i was just, not just lying down on a floor that there was an altar here my father had a covenant with god i came close to the place of covenant he would have blessed me he would have lifted me but lack of discernment did you know that one of the highest indices according to scripture that measures maturity is the ability to discern strong meats the bible says are for them who are of full age is that true who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern discernment is powerful the faculty of perception this comes through prayer this comes through study of scripture this comes through exposing yourself to the atmosphere of the holy spirit in these end times you need discernment if you do not want to lose your bishopric to lose your destiny it takes discernment are we still together the first reason why people lose we are dealing with the mystery of restoration lack of discernment number two the second reason why people lose in this kingdom is carelessness 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 is the second reason why we lose revelation chapter 3 please and verse 11 revelations 3 and verse 11 it says behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown you can lose your crown hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3 hebrews 2 and verse 3 please give it to us hebrews 2 and verse 3 the bible says how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation negligence carelessness many people have lost precious things because of carelessness they have lost valuable destiny relationships they have lost opportunities for instance how many young people had the opportunity they heard that a job offer was there at a platter of gold their uncle said send your cv and they carelessly assumed that the job will always be there carelessness is dangerous we must obtain grace tonight to fight carelessness like you fight the devil you can lose things you can lose years because of carelessness number three are we still together the third reason for losses in this kingdom is called ignorance of the laws of life ignorance of the laws of life comma the laws of destiny and the laws of the kingdom ignorance of the laws of life the laws of destiny and the laws of the kingdom psalm 82 and verse 5 listen this world operates by laws there are laws of life there are laws of destiny there are laws of the kingdom your ignorance of those laws can cost you so many things including your life let me give you an instance someone can decide right now to end his life by going to stand in front of a moving train is that true he violated the laws of life 
Someone can be part of a bad relationship that leads him into destroying a precious destiny. That's violating the laws of destiny. But there are people who can give themselves over through ignorance and the devil can take advantage of them and destroy and waste their lives. Ignorance. Listen, this is a kingdom that operates by light. It takes spiritual illumination. High level illumination. Psalms 82 and verse 5. The Bible says they know not. Neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness. And all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, I have said, Ye are God and all of you, not some, are children of the Most High. The tragedy is in the next verse. But ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Ignorance is costly. We must contend for light. We must contend for spiritual illumination. Is that true? It was this passion for light to supply spiritual intelligence to the body that made Paul to make that statement he made in Ephesians chapter 3. Please give us Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 2 and 3 then we'll jump to 9 and 10. 2 and 3. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me for your sake now to you word how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four in few words. Now when you go to verse 9. He was granted grace. What is the grace? The grace is to make all men see. To open the eyes of men. Take away ignorance. And verse 10 is the reason. To the intent. That now to the principalities. And powers in heavenly places. Might be known by the church. The manifold wisdom of God. Dominion. Is the resultant effect of the comprehension of the principles of the kingdom dominion is not an impartation there is no anointing in scripture for dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of God we have beautiful media people here doing an excellent job of coverage while I teach they are operating by knowledge not their size not their gender it is the level of illumination they have as far as this activity is concerned we must contend for mastery and fight ignorance like we fight the devil are we together number four is god helping us we're discussing losses because when you want to make advancement advancement happens in the absence of situations that retrogress or impede you to the degree to which that impedance is taken away that is the degree to which it can be said you are advancing number four the fourth reason for losses is abuse and misuse the fourth reason why people lose is abuse and misuse matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 jesus is teaching now and he's teaching about what we have come to know as the parable of the talent follow carefully for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country it says who called his own servants and delivered unto them goods so he gave them something and unto one he gave five talents to another two to another one the bible says to every man according to his ability not according to his love for them at the end of this parable you see he was correct for that allocation 17 the bible says let's go back to 16 25 verse 16 25 verse 16 help us media we're still discussing the parable then he that had received the five talents he went and traded with the same and he made them other five talents and likewise he that had received two he gained also two the tragedy now 18 but he that received one went and did what dig the earth and hid his lord's money you bury seeds not talents talents are not for the ground 
talents are for multiplication you sow seeds the earth is for seeds not for talents and yet this man took something that was supposed to be you were supposed to do business with it abuse and misuse is one of the reasons why people lose when the owner of the talents came back to demand accountability in his arrogance he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you do not sow and so i thought to do you a favor i buried it here is your one talent and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant he took that one talent and he gave it to the one who had proven faithfulness in stewardship the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful are we still together tonight abuse and misuse it was dr miles munro of blessed memory who said when the purpose of a thing is not known he said that the abuse of it is inevitable the word abuse is an abbreviation for abnormal use when a thing is not used within the boundary of its purpose is called abuse are we together so a quick recap before i mention the last point the reasons for losses in life number one lack of discernment number two carelessness number three ignorance of the loss of life the loss of destiny the loss of the kingdom number four abuse and misuse number five tests and trials the fifth reason according to scripture why men lose it can be it may be because of tests and trials job chapter one please from verse nine the bible clearly gives us a a biblical rendition of the life of this man called job the bible testifies that he was a man who feared god and eschewed evil please give us verse nine follow carefully as i read then satan answered the lord and said does job fear god for nothing Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side Hast thou not blessed the work of his hands my god so satan can give this kind of testimony about a man satan is testifying before god that i came close to a man and i found that man so fortified both him his house and his endeavor next verse now put forth your hand and touch all that he hath and he will curse you to the face the lord said unto satan behold all that he hath is in thy power only upon himself put not forth your hand so satan went forth from the presence of the lord sin two tragedy strikes on earth now and there was a day may that day never come to your life but for this man there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house that means they were responsible children the elder brother was already established and something happened there came a messenger unto job and said the oxen were plowing the asses feeding besides them be patient and the sabians fell upon them and took them away yea they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and i only am escaped to tell you imagine this kind of news next verse while he was yet speaking there came another and said the fire of god is fallen from heaven and had burned up the sheep the servants consumed them and i only am escaped to to tell you while he was yet speaking my god there came another and said the chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon your camels they have carried them away yea and slain the servants with the edge of the sword and i only am escaped to tell you as though that was over he was yet speaking there came another and said this one is not just animals again now your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house 
and behold there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and i am escaped alone to tell you two more verses then job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and worshipped after such a news next verse please we're finishing at 22 and said naked came i out of my mother's womb and naked shall i return thither the lord gave and the lord had taken away blessed be the name of the lord 22 hallelujah and in all this job sin not nor charge god foolishly listen to me there are times in your life and my life i know this is not a popular message but there are times that events can happen around your life to the end that the worship of things and your connection to things be broken god's obsession is not to take away things from us he desires that we prosper but there is a problem when those you see the thing with things is that they also want to be lords so when they come to your life they don't remain where you kept them they also begin their manifesto in your life to ascend to a point where they take god's throne there is a system for managing those things god enthrones himself in your life by withdrawing from your life everything that tries to be him so if it is your intelligence if it is your uncle your connection there are people who come to church and while they are saying understand faith they are laughing but they don't really care because there is an uncle who are giving them assurance whenever you are ready you come and just when you are ready the uncle relocates to canada let me tell you what happens to you when you come for service under that condition whether there's praise worship or not you will lie down on the ground that's the real day you will start learning faith because at that point now you have been forced the human spirit is stubborn it does not easily bow to the lordship of christ not in the presence of things not in the presence of many the bible says it this way apostle john was teaching us in his epistles he says love not the world neither the things that are in the world the word love there is the greek word eros is an affinity an ungodly affinity that can affect your relationship with god there is a jealousy dimension of god that will not share accommodation with every other thing he created it's an exclusive position so whilst he blesses you with prosperity increase fame anointing whatever it is he doesn't have a problem with you having those things but there is a side effect to men who have not been worked upon by god it does not mean you are bad it's a weakness in humans you must pass through a season in the spirit where god steps back and allow those things that have attempted to be savior and lord and el shaddai you see the futility of them outside of the influence of god the end is not to destroy you see when you are passing through this season with god it looks like he's nonchalant over the things you are losing he's concentrating on your training because when you do learn restoration is still possible so while you are saying god are you not seeing what is leaving me he's saying in my world not yet there's no such thing as something living i am working on you there are people who stand and brag based on their certificates based on their uncles their aunties did your bible not say some will trust in horses it says some trust in chariots but we we who have been cultured to understand we trust in the name that anything minus the name of the lord is a disaster it's only a matter of time a man can vow and say come and meet me tomorrow and get a contract and between that night till the next day and Ahitophel comes to him and gives him a counsel and by the next day he says I can't remember telling you such a thing listen believers it is true that there are times that tests and trials can cause us to lose things albeit temporarily 
James chapter 1, Apostle James was teaching us from verse 2. Are we still learning? James, James chapter 1, Apostle James is teaching us. He said, my brethren, so he's talking to believers in Christ. He's not talking to the heathen. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Support your confidence with this revelation. Knowing this, there is something you need to know that gives you confidence in the midst of plenty and in the midst of nothing knowing this and lord you seem so far away a million miles on what it feels today you may be going through a season like that and though i haven't lost my faith i must confess right now that is hard for me to pray it's true but i don't know what to say i don't know where to start but as you give the grace with all that's in my heart i will see and i will pray even in my darkest star through the sorrow and the pain i will see and i will pray guess the part of the song that i love i lift my hands to honor you because your word is true i will see can i tell you this ask any great man you know there is something in the school of the spirit called the cave of adulam that is where great men are made there are certain times in this life some prayers you cannot pray some things away you can only pray for grace to pass through it run away from people without scars they have jumped the school of the spirit paul said let no man trouble me i'm speaking to some of you because hear me your loss is not because of carelessness uh -uh. There is the making of a man of God. There is a making of an intercessor. There is a making of a kingdom financier. Not every loss is demonic. The training of champions is hard. God called you to be a kingdom financier. And gave you an instruction to carry all your money and bring to church. You brought the money and sold and told by the next day the heavens will open. And for one year... You are now living from hand to mouth. He does not hate you. He's teaching you faith. There will be a recompense. So that you can stand holding an account with one billion. And yet it's not in your heart. Jesus is still Lord. That is the morale of the training. Can I tell you this? I came here sensing in my heart. That within your region. There are people who have lost things. And even lost time there are people as soon as you finish school you wanted to get a job like every other person god says stay back and everybody is moving forward and even you you don't know the name of what you are doing with god god what are you doing with me can i tell you this you must understand that when god is silent his silence is a language every time god is silent he's saying you are in the school of the spirit don't be embarrassed you will cry it's true you've often heard people i hope god is blessing you tonight there are fathers of faith here veterans of the gospel your fathers in the land you ask them they will tell you their journeys they will tell you they will there, there as a man of god there are times you will be going through things yourself you will counsel others and you will receive a word for them but for you a word does not come and yet God will demand obedience and compliance. You pray for someone and there is an open door. But there are bills waiting for you. And you are saying, God, I'm serving you faithfully. I'm teaching you what the silence of God is saying. You are in a school. While you are crying, heaven is clapping and saying, don't give up. Because the Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing. It says, for we will reap. Well-doing is a seed. Is God speaking to us? There are various reasons. Can I tell you this? <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. 
in genesis chapter 40 don't turn there just write it for reference the bible talks of a prison look up please joseph and the wine presser and the baker met in one place the name of that place is the prison the prison is where both good and bad people meet don't judge everybody in the prison they are there for various reasons there are some who are there because they defaulted but there are some who are there because they are being made to become saviors the prison is where both good and bad meet the cross is where both jesus and the thieves meet be careful when you judge people while they are going through seasons you do not know the reason why they are going through it are we together in that same prison there was joseph the righteous there was the wine presser the butler the defaulters they were all there the way to the throne is the cross the way to sit over egypt is to pass through the prison let me speak to you many of you admire greatness you admire great people i want to tell you there is a mystery that not many of them will tell you sincerely look beyond the crowns and the glamour there are scars that are testaments of endurance they lost to gain if you want to gain in this kingdom you must be prepared to lose losing is how we gain are we together because you will not appreciate restoration until you understand the idea of losses there are people right now who have lost things you lost a job because of your integrity you made up your mind you will not compromise you will not bribe and you lost not every loss is proof that god has left you there are losses that are scars of honor symbols of endurance is god still with us tonight mm. let me give us three keys for restoration and then we'll pray someone's breakthrough is coming now please pay attention keys give us access as big as a door is is a small key that opens it how many of you have stood before a giant door simply because a key that could enter your pocket was missing you stood before that door helpless as adult and matured as you are a small key was missing and it kept you grounded keys are powerful they can open great doors even ancient doors number one what is the first key for restoration please pay attention number one the first key that leads to restoration according to scripture is called self-examination the power of evaluation the power of self-examination you want restoration in your life your family your business self-examination second corinthians 13 and verse 5 help us media second corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 read with me please if you're a christian and you can see it projected ready one to read examine yourself it says uh-huh whether ye be in the faith the instruction is examine yourselves to examine yourself means to find a place and sit down and engage in deep contemplation there are many people who pray but they do not think thinking is a miracle the bible says god is able to do more than what we ask or think you've heard me say it in my teachings that both your prayer and your thinking are warriors there is a prayer warrior there is a thinking warrior god answers all the requests they bring to him you can pray well but if you do not think well you may never come out of certain tragedies the psalmist would write a song and he would write under sila pause and think deeply is that true the bible encourages believers to think to sustain times of deep contemplation for instance in philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true honest just pure lovely 
are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise it says think on these things self-examination Luke chapter 15 popular story we we'll read three verses from verse 17 Luke 15 from verse 14 this was the story of the prodigal son please keep the scripture there just as a background let's go to verse 17 okay well keep it from verse 14 remember the young man who had access to his father's wealth but he wanted ownership is that true and the father gave him he did not think well if he thought well he would know that access is better than ownership because access you have you have the abundance to you minus the responsibility of maintenance but ownership you have both access and the responsibility of maintenance in this kingdom we don't own anything owners are rebels we are stewards my car my house my children then you maintain it in this kingdom we have access from genesis you may freely eat but it's not your own but the the carnal man wants it in his name ownership the young boy had access but he wanted ownership father i'm of age let it be in my name lack started when access switched to ownership and the young man went as a result of his careless thinking his life deteriorated he lost everything are we still together to a point where someone who was in a place of royalty was now feeding with the swine 14 please and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want we're reading to 20 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields to feed swine what a what a decline and he would not feign and he would not fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself the bible did not say the holy ghost spoke to him the bible did not say a counselor advised him it is within the power of the human spirit to sit down and say why is my life like this listen let me tell you there there is for many of you here this is already a word for you don't allow yourself to just keep growing old and things are just happening you need to sustain the power of contemplation as a father why am i always in lack why am i always fighting the seed for an answer is a question you do not deserve an answer until you have a question is that true for someone here you need to sit down and think why am i failing in this business lord you gave me a ministry influence zero doctrine zero salvation zero something is wrong the bible says be still and you will know there is a level of knowledge that comes when you are still our generation sadly is a busy generation thank god for technology but if not managed it can be the demon that distracts you out of advancement is that true all kinds of things clamoring for your attention no champions and great people those who make advancement in life are people who understand the power of deep contemplation they lock themselves you are a visionary leader millions are depending on the ideas and the decisions that come out of that contemplation you cannot be careless you cannot be rash obtain grace in jesus name to sit down quietly some of you after this conference you may just need to go excuse everybody out of your house or your room or your office and just sit down quietly no television no radio no internet holy ghost i'm here there has to be a way out of this speak to me go and ask inventors as champions as visionary leaders ideas are birthed in the place of contemplation where they sit quietly there has to be a way to this business there has to be a way to raise this capital there has to be a way to ministry spirit of the living god i open up my faculties to your influence and whilst you are there suddenly from heaven something comes and graduates you to victory for the next 10 years 
Are we blessed? The power of self-examination. The power of contemplation. This is the first key to restoration. Number two. The second key that leads to restoration is brokenness. Psalm 51 verse 17. Brokenness. Because there are times you notice out of the five reasons I gave you. Five reasons for losses. Four of them are reasons that authorize Satan to come and destroy your life. So when you want restoration, Psalm 51 please. And verse 17. There are times you need to be broken. Brokenness suggests taking responsibility. Brokenness suggests saying, look, the way things have gone around my life, there may be need for repentance. There may be need for openness of heart. Lord, I repent. You spoke to me in a dream. My pastor gave a message. I ignored him. I ignored the instructions of the authorities over me. There must be need for brokenness. The young man, when he came to himself, here's what he said. Let me show you what brokenness is. How many hired servants has my father? And I am here feeding with the swine. Here is brokenness. I will arise and I will go to my father. I cannot advance into prosperity, but I can advance to the man who can help me. There are two levels of advancement. Advancement to God, then from God, advancement to destiny. You cannot advance to destiny when you have not advanced to God. When you find yourself in defeat, don't advance to money. Don't advance to fame. Don't advance to a blind restoration. There is only one person who deserves your advancement. I cannot go back to my wealth. I cannot go back to my reputation. But I can go back to my father. God is speaking to someone here. You were once on fire. You once loved God. Now it looks like you have lost everything. You were once a visionary businessman. Until you joined some so-called club or association that just derailed your values. It may not be easy to get that business back overnight. But there is a father who is waiting for you. Notice the Bible never said the prodigal son met the father at home. The father already started moving too. He will not meet you at your mess. But you will not meet him at home too. You will meet him somewhere at the point of your obedience. I will arise, he says. And I will go to my father. When I see my father, I will not just shake him and say, hi dad. Mm -mm. I will say, father. I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son, he says, but take me as one of your servants. When the father saw that there was brokenness already, he didn't even talk to him about the issue again. He held him and embraced him and restored the signet ring, a symbol of royalty. You are now back to my fold. Listen to me. Every time you lose in life, businessmen hear this. When your business crashes and everything goes down, don't say I'm looking for money to go back. Uh -uh. There is only one person you go back to. Father, Abba, the source, the sustainer. Until you sort it out with God, you cannot go back anywhere. You used to be a man of God on fire. Now you backslid in prayer life zero, word life zero. You're not even sure you are saved. You don't go back to ministry. You go back to Father. It is from father he reallocates you to your inheritance is somebody learning now we're dealing with restoration genuine biblical pathway that leads to restoration it cannot be in the absence of brokenness from self-examination to brokenness lord i'm sorry i was not a faithful tither i was not a giver i did not support your house you gave me two billion naira i misused it jumped around with psycho fans who promised to be there now everything has gone bad don't say the ideas are still in my head it's just to get a loan i assure you you will recycle that pain again life is a patient teacher it can repeat the lessons for as long as it will take for you to learn are we together what do you gain in the place of brokenness a contrite heart what do you gain in the place of brokenness you reprioritize god above everything i love
love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Listen, let me show you the position of brokenness. This is it. Yes, I know you are a CEO. But life brings you to a point where you are no longer ashamed. When your knees can touch the ground, then your head can wear the crown again. When your knees can touch the ground in brokenness. Samson was one person who lost his estate in destiny. Let me show you how that restoration happened. His eyes, his symbol of light had been taken away and while they put him between two pillars to mock his god he prayed one prayer i may not have the opportunity to live again but oh god even in death give me the honor and the privilege of valiance let me do much for you and they did not realize that while they were laughing at him his hair was coming back can i tell you this rejoice not over me my enemies no matter what happened to your yesterday i bring you a word of hope jesus died but he only died for three days let me encourage someone here yes your prayer life has gone down yes i know things may have gone down it may have been your fault your carelessness wrong associations mistakes but let me bring you a word of hope at the scent of water at the scent of water while you are laughing at jesus who died there is an angel leaving heaven to come and open the grave while you are laughing at the dead jesus he did not die forever he only died for three days he only died for three days and while they were laughing at the one who died an angel came the hymn writer says up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph of his foes he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his same serene if christ arose you can arise did you hear what i said businessman hear me man of god hear me those following from whatever nation watching hear me there is hope in this kingdom one of the systems of advantage is that no matter what goes wrong once there is brokenness you have planted the seed for continuity of your destiny can I give you an advice, great leaders? No matter how bad people are, if you find genuine brokenness, I show you people who are still usable. But no matter how good people are, if you do not find brokenness, that is a disaster only waiting for time. Of all that Saul was, he was broken. When he fell before that light who art thou lord he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest you cannot kick against the bricks and his heart was open when peter denied jesus he was broken even the judas you talk about judas was so broken he did not spend the money brokenness is powerful it vetoes your fasting it vetoes your prayer you can fast you can pray you can walk in church if there is no brokenness you cannot go far with god i think we should turn this into a prayer in one minute whilst you are seated cry to the god of heaven lord grant me a broken spirit the pride and the arrogance that is rebellious towards god give me the malleability to repent the ability to not be ashamed that when there is a default in my life and my destiny and my losses come as a report card letting me know that i need to retrace my steps pain is a letter from your future to your present warning you that you need to make adjustments in your life is someone praying please pray be like that
that prodigal son tonight for some of you hallelujah now listen to me listen to me i still have two more points and then we're going to pray but at this juncture my spirit is fired up and i want to make an altar call you are here and you've heard me speak and whilst you heard me speak the holy ghost began to tell you it's time to win this war of destiny tonight there is nothing to be ashamed of running to jesus is like running to receive an award not running to a funeral hear me there are people up the balcony across the aisles and maybe even outside online following you know that the first restoration you need is jesus christ nobody will force you but i believe with all my heart there are people who need to make it right or there are others who say apostle i remember giving my heart to the lord but the way my life is now things have gone haywire wherever you are as i count one to five as our father will always do i like you to leave your seat wherever you are and please run and come and stand here unashamedly you are standing before jesus one are you celebrating them champions cathedral come and stand before jesus the god of your salvation please stand for space stand celebrate them as they come it's time to win that war is this how you celebrate salvation here okay those outside you can create a space for them outside because of that those outside hear me please those who are coming from outside let's have some ushers or counselors just create a space for them where they can stand keep coming come to jesus come to jesus come to jesus Are you coming to Jesus? I have to pray for you before we continue. I love, I love. I love your presence. 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 Listen. Look at me. My brothers and my sisters, some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Rebels don't come to Jesus. Rebels run away from him. So that you have come to Jesus who is the Lord of your salvation. I like you to know that you are not a rebel young and old for some of you you've been having dreams the holy spirit has been speaking to you for some of you he carried you and brought you here do you know why more than just making heaven there are destinies that are connected to your obedience he brought you here to make you if billy graham never got born again in that crusade ground there are millions today who would not make it because of him if Reinhard Bonke never made it to Jesus can I tell you this many of you are here like the prodigal son tonight it is within your power to come to yourself and make up your mind I'm tired of this kind of thing I cannot waste the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross can I tell you this every one of us including myself had to stand before the Lord of our salvation to make this decision this is not a funeral you are standing before Jesus the only thing I want you to do is to mean seriously what you are saying don't come and stand here just because of emotions let it be from the depth of your heart the Bible says whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away listen to me my brothers and my sisters you are here because there is a beautiful destiny yes because you live 
Jesus, I leave. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you leave. Jesus, I leave today. I leave to pray. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, take your place, take your place, take your place. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Your father is here. Like the prodigal son. When he came to his father, the father embraced him. I am still Abba, your source, your sustainer. Please lift your right hand high to the heavens, above your head. And I'd like you to say this after me passionately. Jesus is here. For some of you in your tears and your prayer is the salvation of millions. For some of you in your tears and your prayer is the finances that will fund the gospel in these end times. There are apostles here and prophets and evangelists and pastors and businessmen and politicians, custodians of the destinies of many. Take seriously the decision you are making. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it again passionately. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. Like the prodigal child, I have come to you just as I am unable to help myself but i believe in your love i believe you died for me i believe you shed your blood for me i believe you resurrected for me tonight i make jesus my savior my lord and my king i receive eternal life into my spirit i also receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and i declare that from today and forever i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father I present to you the ones Jesus died for. Jesus, when you hung upon that cross, these ones together with all of us were worth your death, your blood. Like trophies we bring to you, Abba, these ones who have come back home. According to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken over your life. Commend you therefore to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that is able to make you and mature you and to make you a useful battle axe in the hands of the Lord. Every guilt, every shame, every past leaves you now and leaves you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now very quickly before I they are returning back to their seats okay now this is what i want you to do all of you the teaching is still on so even whilst you are there please lend your attention but there is a, a counselor waving the placard just turn to the back and you will see him what i want all of you to do is just follow him together in concert as we clap for them there will be a group of people very briefly very briefly they will attend to you and you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them Champions Cathedral, is this the best you can do?
No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Sing it one more time. There's no shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No one you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Hallelujah. Can we take the third key? Just help those who are crying. Can we take the third key? Whilst you are taking them, counselors, just help them. Let's make it snappy so that they can be back because we are soon to pray now. The third key is knowledge. The third key that controls restoration. Are we still together? Shout hallelujah. So number one, the power of self-examination, self-evaluation. Number two, the power of brokenness. The third key that controls restoration in this kingdom is knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11, please, and verse 9. Help us, media. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. The Bible says, An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. The beeper says, But through knowledge shall the just be delivered through knowledge shall the just be delivered this is a kingdom that operates like i stated earlier operates by light is it possible is it possible to have excuse me is it possible to give the new converts the forms and then they can fill it on their seat and then when I'm done praying, I can still request that all of them get back. Will that be fine? Will that be fine, sir? Or, well, anyway, just, I just thought so that it doesn't bring any distraction. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Knowledge. Everyone say, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. One more time. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. There is a relationship between knowledge and victory. There is a relationship between knowledge and deliverance. There is a relationship between knowledge and restoration. The same way ignorance leads to losses, knowledge can lead to restoration. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. A scripture I love to quote so much. Here's what it says. Arise, shine. Why? For your light is come. Not that your light is available. It's always been there. But when it comes to you, it sustains the power to make you arise and to shine. For your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I wish we can have the amplified rendition. The amplified says, let me quote it for time. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new life. Arise from the prostration, the depression that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Oh, beautiful. We have it here. It says, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? For your light has come. Everyone say, my light has come. Prophesy it over your destiny. My light has come. Prophesy it over your family. My light has come. Light is powerful. Is it not light that turns night into day? What did your Bible say about the night? That weeping is related to the night time. It endures for the night. It says, but joy, it ties light to joy. For as long as there is night in your life, weeping continues. But the moment illumination, light comes to you, then you arise in joy. You need to pant after knowledge. Knowledge of the ways of God knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom you must access wisdom by light scripture says talking of wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice it says it says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness job 29 the exploits of job 
Job was recounting the basis for his victory. What was responsible for him being the greatest man in the east. Please give us Job 29, the first four verses. Are we still together tonight? Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, Oh, that I were in the months past, he says, as in the days when God preserved me, when his candle, everybody say light, when his light shined upon my head, and when by his light I walk through darkness. There are two kinds of light you need to advance. The one that shines on your head and the one that shines on your path. The one that shines on your head is for knowledge. The one that shines on your path is for direction. Job said this light was on my head and was on my path. For it says as I was in the days of my youth. When the secrets of the Lord were upon my tabernacle. In fact, let's extend a bit. Go ahead and read. When the Almighty was yet with me and my children were about me. When I washed my steps. Look at the fringe benefits of access to light. I washed my steps with butter. The rock poured out oil. Rivers of oil. Uh -huh. It says, I went out to the gate through the city. When I prepared my seat in the street. What happened? The young men, by reason of this light, they hid themselves and the aged ones stood up. The princes refrained talking and laid their hands on their mouth. Ten. The nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard me, it blessed me. And when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. Just stop there. The exploits of light. You want advancement? And even restoration, it is at, it's at the mercy of the lights that you have. This beautiful auditorium is well lit. Both your LED screens, the TVs, and then the auditorium. Why? Because there's sufficient light. If you put a candle here, it's not light enough to turn the night into day. You need high level spiritual illumination. Are we together? The last key that controls restoration is the prophetic hmm. Isaiah 42 and verse 22 the prophetic was given by God as an instrument of restoration Isaiah 42 please pay attention we're about to pray we're about to pray Isaiah 42 and verse 22 media help us let's read together can we read ready one to read but this is a people robbed and spoiled uh-huh they are all of them snared in holes they are hid in prison houses they are taken for a prey and none say it delivereth for a spoil and none say yet restore restoration must be spoken to happen it says they are taken for a prey and there is no prophetic voice that can speak and say, Restore. Restoration. Second Kings chapter 6 and verse 1. A classic expression of restoration. Hallelujah. Someone's life is about to change. And the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, Watch this now. Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight or small for us. Let us go. So this was an intention to go forward. But something happened. Are we together? Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, the place of breakthrough. And take thence every man a beam. And let us make us a place there. Where we may dwell. And he said, go ye. When he gave that instruction, one said, Be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood, the Bible says. But a tragedy happened. Listen carefully now. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master. I am in trouble. I've lost something now. My sincere intention to go forward has brought me trouble. And that axe was borrowed. Watch the prophetic. 
the man of god answered and said come down you are safe the prophetic is still within your reach where fell it ha, the lord is speaking to someone where fell the relationship where fell the favor where fell the open door and he showed him the place please keep the scripture and he cut down a stick and cast it in theater and the iron did swim and he said take it up to thee and he put down his hand and took it i will restore through the instrument of the prophetic an axe head heavier than water but under a certain condition i i i prophesy to someone in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you now see what happens when our father baba deboy would stand and say in the name of jesus casually speaking everything you have lost let it be restored and people say amen and people return with testimonies and say my child who has been missing for 10 years let me tell you this i know that the prophetic may have been abused here and there but when the prophetic is administered within the balance of scripture it is powerful no man can rise beyond a certain threshold until the prophetic lifts you I tell you this I had the honor and the privilege of meeting our father again not too long and when he was praying and speaking over my life I knew it was coming from the depth of his heart he sent everybody out of the room and began to speak from the depth of his heart i knew he was not just advising he was programming realities can i tell you this as powerful as jesus is he walked under a close heaven for 30 years until a prophet opened his heavens your jesus was under a close heaven for 30 years until he met a prophet called john the baptist even if you are a midwife when you are pregnant and you are about to give birth another midwife will have to help you <laughs> hear me this is where the arrogance of our generation has pegged men you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred by another <laughs> fire is about to fall in this place listen to me many of you have lost please take it hard for me listen carefully there is a prophetic word that i want to bring and then we'll pray i'll not take too long we'll be done shortly please be sensitive now i just sense angelic activities in this place nehemiah chapter 5 and verse 11 Nehemiah 5 Champions Cathedral The city of Wari South of the Niger Hear the word of the Lord He said restore I pray you to them even when even when are you reading with me not tomorrow restore even this day their lands their vineyards their olive yards their houses a hundred part of the money and of the corn and of the wine and of the oil that he exact of them listen please look up Every time many of you are businessmen many of you read economies there is always whenever there is a taking it leaves someone and goes to the hand of another is that true who 
did your breakthrough when it left you where did it go because the bible says when you catch a thief he doesn't only restore he restores tenfold ezekiel 37 i was taken was still buttressing on this prophecy this is the prophetic word the lord gave me tonight nehemiah but hear me the hand of the lord was upon me we are reading ezekiel 37 he carried me out in the spirit and set me down and he showed me a valley full of bones bones means they were once an army but something happened he caused me to pass by them they were very many and they were very dry that means they had been there a long time verse 3 he said unto me son of man champions cathedral can this business leave can this family leave can this anointing be restored the prophet was honest he said lord with this situation i'm seeing only thou knowest and then he spoke to him and he said to me prophesy he said to me prophesy he said to me prophesy verse 5 cause breath to enter you so that you will live verse 6 beautiful and i will lay sinews and i will do all of these things go to verse 7 that's what i'm looking for he said prophesy and this verse says so i he said deliver so i i'm here today because god sent me if he says prophesy then we must prophesy if he says restoration then we must decree it are you ready to pray father i step into everything i have lost everything that has left me let my family lift your voice and pray spiritually financially in ministry in business in career are you praying are you praying inside outside RCCG Champions Cathedral the city of worry lift your voice and declare de la parus que parite catabarusia que brande que te le que te bracata restore restore the grace restore the favor restore the lifting is praying someone is praying Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, my God. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, the up of my head, but now, oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, you lift my head.
like you please listen listen there are few we have a few minutes i don't intend to delay us especially because of our fathers but the hand of god is upon me now praise the name of the lord hear me there are people here and i'm seen by the spirit there are people here there are yokes that have tied and kept individuals listen to me and families the bible declares that now the lord is that spirit and that where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there are individuals here the only thing growing in your life is your age nothing else is growing i want to pray for you right now listen as i pray for you the power of god is going to come upon you we may not be able to do that for everybody but i want you to bring them out here let's just have a few ushers whether you are an usher or not just join them there's a reason i want to pray for them we can, because this night except god is not god that whatever has held you down in the name of jesus it must give way are we together i stretch my hands right now at the count of three i declare that anyone here under the sound of my voice who has been tied down by witchcraft tied down by all kinds of yokes i join my faith with the fathers of faith and in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus don't come out at random don't come out at random the power of god will bring you out in the name of jesus just bring those under the anointing one two you shout jesus three be delivered right now by the power of the holy spirit i decree and declare bring those under the anointing jesus the name that is above all names bring those under the anointing let them go in the name of jesus let them go release their destinies release their destinies by the power of the holy ghost every plot that is not of god i come by the rod of the higher priesthood let there be deliverance now let there be emancipation now in the name of jesus hallelujah listen i'm praying for you there are families zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18 he says son of man what seest thou and he said i saw four horns 19 he said these are the horns that have scattered judah your praise scattered israel your covenant scattered jerusalem your peace there are horns that fight families i'm praying again that every power sitting on anyone's destiny you're going to shout that name again in the name of jesus be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now release families release destinies release families release destinies release families release destinies we cost you by the god of heaven we cost you by the god of joshua that rides upon the wings of the wind Hear me. Please listen. If there is any family here that has been tied down in one position, as I declare upon you, I like you to begin to receive and say, I'm moving forward. I'm making progress. I declare right now, every family that has been tied down, in the name of Jesus, go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. No delay. Go forward. Restoration. In the name of Jesus. Let hope, let it 
rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hope is rising in this place tonight. Hear me. Listen. All of you who are in front here. Listen. Hold on. Everyone in front here, I declare that everything that has tied you by the God of heaven, I command it to leave you now. Leave your family now. If you are in business here, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Alas, master, it was borrowed. In the name that is above all names, everything that has tied you down to bring reproach to the name of the Lord upon your life, I stand here upon this exalted altar and I declare to you, come out of every debt now. Come out of every loss now. Come out of every debt now. Come out of every loss now. Speak to you, advance, 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 go forward, advance, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen to me please. Just two, three minutes and I'm done. The Bible speaks about a man in the book of Esther called Mordecai. Mordecai once saved the life There are two people who did well But were not rewarded in scripture Number one Was Joseph He helped the wine presser To interpret his dream And he said when you are restored Please tell the king I'm innocent The man added two years To Joseph's pain A man's memory A man's forgetfulness Can multiply your times of pain until God as an act of his mercy brought a dream to Pharaoh and the wine presser said I remember my wrong the second person was Mordecai he saved the life of Ahasuerus the king over 127 provinces and Mordecai was not rewarded but when his time came the Bible says that night could not the king sleep I'm saying this because God is about to open the book of remembrance hear me there are some of you who have been part of the success story of many people you have contributed to the rising of many you have helped to take shame out of many but you have been forgotten in the name of Jesus I bow my knees to the God of my covenant don't kneel down I'm the one kneeling down I pray for you between now and the next three months if God be God be remembered in the name of Jesus be remembered in the name of Jesus be remembered in the name of Jesus that night could not a hazard of sleep and he said bring me the chronicles when they brought him the chronicles he saw where Mordecai saved his life and yet was not rewarded and he said who is in the chamber Haman was there and he said what shall be done to the man who does this Haman thought he was the one and so out of the abundance of his selfishness he gave a recommendation he said do that immediately can I speak to you there are some of you who are at this conference it looks like you are nobody's ignored but i stand by the grace of god and i declare may what happened to mordecai happen to you yeah. hear me the bible says let god arise and let his enemies be scattered when haman coordinated the honor of mordecai he returned back broken to his wife and he said wife look at what happened to me and he said uh -uh. mordecai is a jew esther is a jew you are in trouble he said this one 
has come to get you because there is a covenant that protects them can i speak to you anybody that has mocked your god and fought your covenant may what happened to her man happen to them in the name of jesus christ i want you to go back home today with this consciousness that the lord has restored to me both things and years you are barren here trusting god for the fruit of the womb i want you to not just expect one child expect twins expect triplets in the name of jesus christ and may i lend my voice with the pastor and the leaders to encourage you please do not miss tomorrow morning session for anything it's a conference it takes a sacrifice but every session is worth your while and worth your coming open up your heart and ensure that you are around and invite as many if there is no space if you have to climb the roof climb and sit there in the days of jesus christ everybody who came had something to go back with for tonight may the lord bless you may the lord honor you in the name of jesus you will not need to tell people you came to church the testimonies that begin to happen will tell people that you met god in the name of jesus christ god bless you and see you tomorrow dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development Lord grant me the discipline 